My dad's a pastor. Um, he served in um, Hong Kong, uh, Sydney, and uh, Los Angeles. Um, I was born in Australia. I was the youngest of the family. Um, my brother is 11 years older than me. My sister is 15 years older than me. So being the youngest, I got all the love. <laughs> I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled. <laughs> um, I didn't want to talk about being a pastor's kid. Um, I went to church all the time. Um, that's out of, mostly out of obedience. And uh, I was familiar with Bible stories, you know, that and that. And like, um, being a pastor's kid, there's a lot of pressure on you because everyone in the church knows you. So you walk by anyone, they say hi to you. Um, you have to really be your best at church. Um, so that was kind of stressful. And also just being in the pastor's family, there's a lot of stress that the pastor gets that gets passed along the family. <laughs> so when I feel like it's not only the pastors that's serving, the whole family is really serving in the church wherever they are. Um, uh, also, I was born in Australia, and then when I was two, I moved to Los Angeles. Um, so I don't remember anything about Australia. Sorry, I don't have an like, Australian accent or anything. Um, so I grew up in Los Angeles mostly, and then when I was eight, I moved to Hong Kong. And that was a time where I really, I was really sad and angry at like my, my parents, just because it was my home, Los Angeles was my home. And then, um, like I didn't understand that God has called my dad to go to Hong Kong and serve. Um, so I also leave my, um, my sister and my brother, because they were studying in uh, university in California. So yeah, I was just really bitter about being in Hong Kong all the time. My mom said I like sleepwalked <laughs> and stuff. Uh, just because I was, I don't know, not used to it or something. Um, and in Hong Kong, I went to a Christian school, international Christian school. Um, I really praise God that I was there. Um, but during that stage of life, you know, you're a teenager, you're kind of rebellious. Um, most of the students in that school didn't have a really positive um, attitude during like Christian events that we'll have at school. Like every Thursday we would have chapel at 7.40 a.m. Like nobody wants to go to that. I mean, and it was mandatory that we had to go to Bible class every like semester. And we always thought that Bible homework just got in the way of real work. Like we just, oh, we have to do Bible homework. Oh, we have to spend more time on it. Working and then, um, uh, despite that, um, I really had a good core group of friends uh, at um, International Christian School. Um, their parents were really strong Christians, and that got passed on along to them. And being in that group, it was really encouraging for for me to be part of that group of friends. Um, so, yeah, a lot of what we learned in chapel, we would have speakers like. I think even, I think MC Jin came to speak. Ooh, wow. and, uh, and, like, yeah, so, but it seemed to all just pass through us. We didn't really listen. A lot of us were asleep during chapel. Um, so thankfully I had this group of friends. And uh, this one year, we decided to go to this Christian camp called Gateway. Uh, and at this camp, people from all around the world would come. Uh, it's really crazy, it's really busy, lots of worship, messages, extremely tiring, um, but it's what that continuous worship and messages and not enough free time to, uh, that got me serious about listening to God's word. And um, uh, I saw how, so people from different ethnicities came, and if you all know like in, I'm not sure when, but like, the Japanese and the Chinese don't have a good relationship because of like how Japanese invaded China and um, raped the women, killed everyone, killed the children. Um, but I saw people that were Japanese and Chinese ancestors, and they were they went up on stage and like apologized and forgave each other, and that was really amazing to me because I think like everyone was just crying, um, and I it was during worship that I I felt God's grace. Um, I don't remember the song. I think everything's just, like blanked out. Like I felt God looking down on us and smiling at me. And I was like, why? I mean, I'm so sinful. 
And um, that's when I realized that God really loves us because we're His children and He won't ever let us go. Um, even though we're sinful and we're not perfect. Um, well, I knew that a long time ago, but it was this, at that moment I decided that, yeah, Jesus is my Savior. Um, after that, my behavior towards um, Christian messages, church, um, changed a lot. Um, I started listening, um, really trying to have an interest and in learn more about God. Um, it wasn't until, I think, when I started discipleship with Will, that um, Will asked me all these questions about, well, what do you want to do with your relationship with God? And um, like he kept like um, asking me, oh, what, what do you want? What do you want with God? And like, you know, your Christian walk. And I was like, like seriously, I haven't given it much thought before then. But um, after that, I realized that I really wanted to have an intimate relationship with God because I never really had one. It was just like, I know God's there. Um, so, yeah, you might have wonder why I've been a Christian for so like I've been a Christian for so long, but I haven't been baptized yet. But that camp was like in middle school. Um, I went to mil a lot of events. Like I went to like a Franklin Graham um, conference. He was like the son of Billy Graham, was like a really famous preacher. Um, like my friends and I would go out and like you know how when they say like um, if you want to accept uh, uh, the gospel, then you go out and like go to them. Um, my friends would go out just to like, oh, we should go out, he's, he's really famous. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think from this year, mostly, um, I've always put off baptism because I thought I was never perfect enough. Um, and that might be because like, my pressure as being a pastor's kid, I wasn't, I never thought I was good enough to be baptized. I thought that was like, going to be like the peak of my Christian life. And, um, I've only like recently realized that the peak of my Christian life might not be until like I die. <laughs> <laughs> As a Christian, you're gonna continually be growing in Christ. You're not just gonna, you know, peak at 30 and then go downhill from that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the message I got was that. Um, oh wait, I have a verse uh, from uh, Acts 2:41. Uh, then Philip began with the scripture and told him that good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the man said, look, here's water. Why shouldn't I get to be baptized now? Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. The man answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So they went down the water and Jesus, Philip uh, baptized them. Uh, so this verse really shows about, I don't know, I've kind of been avoiding baptism and uh, I really see my fault in uh, waiting until now, because um, Jesus said, "If you really, um, you should follow what I do." Um, and the Bible says, "If you if you believe, you should be baptized immediately." Uh, so uh, got lost. Um, yeah. So the main message is exactly why He came to save us is because we're not perfect. And uh, since I'm not perfect, I have to make this commitment to become a stronger follower of Christ and be a servant for Him.